So now we are on lesson 32. We're still talking about electrodynamics. And in this instance, remember in the previous lesson, we spoke about generators. Now we're going to talk about motors. It's not going to be an extensive lesson because most of the things have already been covered in the previous lesson. So I would suggest that you first watch that lesson first. All right. Okay, cool. So now let us first start our discussion by asking ourselves what is an electric motor or what is a motor so a motor is a, a device that actually converts electrical energy into mechanical energy so we have if we have a motor the conversion there is from electrical energy to mechanical energy this means that we're going to be supplying the current and then that current will be turned into movement right so remember the difference between it and a generator is that with a generator like we mentioned previously we had the co our, our energy conversion is from mechanical so we're converting that motion into electrical energy so we're sort of inducing a current so yeah so that's how we just normally define uh, a motor but then how does it do this it does this thing through something we call the motor effect so what is that principle of the motor effect it says to us that um, the cu a current carrying wire or a coil can exert a force on a permanent um, magnet. So you'll see what we mean by this statement that I've just said just now. But in the same way as with um, generators, we have two types of um, um, uh, motors that we can talk about. We have DC motors as well as AC motors, right? Remember, even in the previous uh, lesson, we spoke about DC, um, what is it, DC generators as well as AC generators. So we said, so, so we said that DC, DC generators have um, split rings. The same thing here, DC motors are also, they also have split rings. AC generators have slip rings. Same thing here as well, AC motors also have slip rings. So we can try to draw them. So if we draw... Um, maybe um, a sort of um, a schematic of how you would just represent a, a, a DC in this, maybe I'll write DC motor here. And on the other board, we can draw an AC motor. So I'm just going to do it quickly. So in this instance, the same way that uh, we had for, 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 for generators, we we'll have your north as well as your south pole. So those are your permanent magnets right and then you will have um a, co a, con a conducting coil we call it a a what do you call it an armature right so that armature will be connected to a split ring and then maybe there and then you will have your brushes over there and then this whole thing will now maybe be connected to an external source with a battery so in this instance we have a power supply. So this will be the negative, the positive. We have a power supply. Remember for generators, we don't actually have something that supplies us with energy or power or current. But for a motor, because we're converting the electrical energy into mechanical energy, we have a power thing. Now let us draw a an AC motor, right? So an AC motor is the same dense as before. North and South Pole magnets. And your armature... And then you have your um, your slip rings over there, a brush. And then maybe this thing is just connected to an alternating um, current source, right? So that's how you draw an alternating thing. So you see the difference. Slip rings has a split ring. Okay, cool. Okay, so now that we know how to actually draw an AC motor as well as a DC motor, our next thing would then be, okay, so we said that we know we, we provide in the current and maybe in this instant, let's start with this one. Let's say maybe here we have the positive terminal of the battery and this and then will be the negative terminal of your battery, right? So meaning conventional current, your current will be flowing in this direction. That's I goes through there. So we say A, B, C, D. And then it's going to flow in this direction, right? So we know the direction of the current. We know the direction of the magnetic field. It's from north to, to the south pole. 
So now, how do we determine the direction at which this motor is going to turn? To do that, we use, in this case, we use the left-hand rule. Still the same thing, using FBI, where this, your thumb, so now I'm using my left hand, your thumb will point in the direction of, of, of your movement or your force, because remember the, the motor effect says that a current carrying conductor or coil exerts a force on a permanent magnet. So it will exert a force in a certain direction. This is the direction of my, my index finger, represent the direction of my magnetic field from north to south pole. And then your this, this finger there is still the direction of the current. So, okay, so we say the direction, let's focus on A. From A to B, the direction of the current is that way. So meaning we must be pointing in this in this direction, right? So it's it's going in that direction. And then the, my index finger is pointing the direction of from north to south pole of my magnetic field. So meaning if my thumb is pointing down, meaning BA will actually go down. So if BA goes down, what, what about um, CD? So CD, there we are, CD. So this is the, the my north to south pole. This is the direction of my current. It's coming in this way, can you see? Meaning it's going up. So direction CD is actually gonna be up. So if this, if this part is going up and this part is going down, meaning this thing is rotating in, in what direction is it rotating? It's rotating in your anti-clockwise direction or counterclockwise, anti or counterclockwise. So that's how you would determine that direction, right? But then, of course, it can be the other way around where you find that instead of having this here, here you have your negative terminal and then you, you have your positive terminal of your battery. Still, you're going to use the same, the left-hand rule for motors. Um, let me just wipe this actually and draw it quickly. So there you are, you have your split rings. And then, uh, so, wait, what am I trying to draw? So you have your, your armature, you have your split rings, and then perhaps there you have your brushes, right? So it doesn't need to be fencing. A, B, C, D, soft pole, north pole, right? Okay, and then here, so we can see that the, the current, remember conventional current is always from positive to negative. So the current is actually now in this direction, current I. So it's moving here from D to, from C to D or D to C, it's moving in that direction. There it is, and then meaning from B to A or A to B is actually moving in, in this direction, right? So we have the direction of the current, we have the direction of the magnetic field, meaning that we can actually find the direction with which our armature, our conducting coil is going to turn. Still using the left hand rule, FBI, force, magnetic field, current, right? So we say, okay, focusing on A, on AB. So the current from AB is moving in this, in this direction over here. And then this is my direction from north to the south pole. Where is AB going? AB is actually going up, right? And then what about CD? CD is this, 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 just the reverse of that. So north to south pole, my current is going that way, meaning my this, the, that thing, if this is going up, if AB is going up, CD is definitely going to go down, right? So we have CD, which is going down. So if this is, if, if this part is going up and this part, CD is going down. It means this thing is rotating clockwise, right? So that's how you find the direction it, with which your 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 thing your coil is going to turn. So um, before we end this lesson, I would just like us to kind of compare between um motors and generators, right? So we have a motor on this side. Is this black? Yeah. So we have a motor. And then maybe on this side can have a generator. So for, for, for motors, we said that the energy conversion is from electrical to mechanical. So electrical energy to mechanical. For generators, however, it's from mechanical to electrical, right? And then for us for, for us here in terms of um, motors to find the direction which your thing is going to turn, we use the left hand 
rule. So we use the left hand rule where we see FBI. So your force, your magnetic field, your current, right? Here we use the right hand rule, still the same thing, FBI, where your thumb is your force. This is this is your your direction of your magnetic field and this is direction of your current right and another thing is that um um so here remember if you're converting electrical energy to mechanical energy it means that we're actually passing current through the coil so passing current through the coil and here we actually have induced current so there's no current that we that was passing that we passed through the coil what happened is that we induced a current by simply moving our magnetic field our coil within a magnetic field i'm trying to see what else am i leaving okay another distinction that we can make is with respect to ac as well as dc ac dc so for both ac generators and so generators ac generators and AC motors, we use um, slip rings. And then for DC generators and DC motors, we use split rings. Okay, okay. So I'm hoping that actually made some sense and then we can actually um, finish off this lesson. In the next lesson, we're actually going to talk a little bit more about um, alternating current as well as rms values as i'm sure you've kind of dealt with them some sometime during the year